Hi, I'm Bob Knoten. On this episode of the Camp Chaos Chronicles, I'm going to show you how to install these energy conversion devices into your prime mover. Dang it. Now, assembling the connecting rods to the pistons is not just a simple matter of sticking a piston on a rod, putting a, putting a piston pin in, and then just sliding them in. There's some prep work that needs to be done. First thing you would have done to prepare your pistons is to number one, measure them to make sure they're right, but, but these are brand new uh, aftermarket pistons, and uh, they're always right although you know I check but then what you need to do is fit the piston rings to the uh, to the their appropriate ring land and it's obvious which ones they go to because they're all different widths so uh, the end gap is important because what you don't want to have happen is first of all if the end gap is too small what happens is the ring heats up it expands and then the ends butt together and then you start losing piston ring lands and uh, you don't want them too big because then you get a leak. And, uh, and you need to put them in the right way as well. There's a right way and a wrong way. Um, and you can tell that simply by referring to the notes that come with the piston rings. So I've already done that with all of these. And if you go back to the $100 Jaguar B12 overhaul series back in the first year of the Camp Chaos Chronicles, you'll see how to do this in great detail. So. So that's what you need to do. Now this is the form on which I have recorded the uh, various dimensions that I needed to come up with. The crank pin bearing clearance between the crank pin and the bearing and the connecting rod in the big end. You can see we got crank pin bearing bore diameter in the connecting rod, the thickness of the two bearing shells, which gives us the crank pin bearing diameter. And then you subtract the journal diameter from that and you get the clearance. And you can see that we've got uh, the clearance, the specification is supposed to be between 0 0.0015 and 0 0.0034. Uh, I like to see it in this range right here, although I'll take anything between 0 0.002 and 0 0.0025. Uh, that's just where I like to have them, a little on the, not tight side, but on the smaller side. And you can see the clearances are 0 0.003, 0 0.0028, and you can see that that kind of carries through. So these are all actually working, and you can see one right here that I got 0 0.003, I think another one down here, and I think there was another one on the other side. These would be acceptable under normal circumstances, but... You know, we got some of them that are only four ten thousandths of an inch away from being too big. So what I chose to do is to take dry fill lubricant and coat the bearings. And this film thickness should be about five ten thousandths of an inch or a half a thousandth. Uh, I didn't need that much, so I shot um, shot it light. So I've got about between two and three thousand ten thousandths of an inch here. Now you see there's some scratches on there. That's just burnishing of the material that that occurred when I was uh, when I was measuring the bearings. And what I came up with was a thickness generally that was between two and three ten thousandths, and uh, that was exactly what I needed to do this. Now both of these crankshafts were almost exactly the same diameter in terms of journals, so you can see that. I am clustered right around two thousandths of an inch, where, which is where I really want to be. Now, this is not the reason why you put dry film lubricant on bearings. Uh, the reason that you do that is so that in the case of uh, momentary oil starvation or when you've got uh, a dry startup, which a lot of these cars are subject to, the dry film lubricant is sort of a uh, 
sort of a safety cushion to uh, prevent damaging the bearing itself. And this stuff is uh, what I use on my track car bearings and, and pistons. Uh, when I've taken it apart in the past, the, while the film has worn out the pistons, because it gets some pretty hard use, it's just a matter of renewing the film and putting the pistons back in again, to date at any rate. Um, so uh, I believe in this stuff. So it's, that's, what, that's what the purpose of it is. Uh, as a side benefit, it will actually close up your clearances which puts them exactly where I want them to be. Now, when you're assembling the piston onto the connecting rod, there's a couple of things that you need to be aware of. First of all, if you look at the top of a piston, whether it's an aftermarket or, a, uh, or the stock piston, you're gonna see an arrow. Now, that arrow points to the front of the engine. The reason that that's there is because all pistons, as far as I know, except for high performance pistons, will have a certain amount of piston pin offset. And what that does in the case of uh, production engines is that delivers a bit less vibration in the engine. And the Jaguar V12 is renowned for being one of the smoothest engines ever made. And part of the reason for that is that the piston pin offset is significant. It's huge. In fact, if you look closely, you can see it. And if you get this installed backwards, you're going to lose that effect. In fact, you could have absolutely the opposite effect. So this has to go forward. Now this one is A1, cylinder A1, which is on the right side of the front. When you put the connecting rod in, there's a certain way that this connecting rod has to go. You'll see that on one side, it has very little bevel on the inside, on the other, it has a lot. And this is really important because if you look at the crankshaft, there are radii between the crank pin and the cheeks of the crank. And those are to prevent that one gigantic stress riser. It smooths out between the two parts at that point. What you have to do then is you have to compensate for that radius by putting that bevel in there. If you put it in this way, it's gonna, that connecting rod is gonna jam against the crankshaft and you won't even get it to turn over once, you, uh, once you've installed it. So you can't get your crank to move, you probably did that. So if we're on the A side, what that means is that the A bank is offset about a connecting rod's width from the B side over here. So it's going to be on the back side of the crank pin. So what you're gonna do is you're going to install this bevel back and then the piston with the arrow pointing to the front. The B side would have the opposite. The bevel would be forward because the B bank is a, half, is a connecting rod width further forward than the A side. So the bevel would be there the arrow would be pointing forward and it would go together like that. Really important, gotta do it. Okay, so we're gonna begin the assembly of the connecting rods onto the pistons. You can see that we have A1's connecting rod and then we've got all the pistons and their pins and rings lined up there ready to go. Over here we have the medieval torture device known as the Spirolox, which are the piston pin retainers. And we're gonna show you how to do this. Now, I don't know if a lot of this is gonna be real clear to you, but we'll give it a shot. First of all, we got our trusty can of assembly lube here. And the first thing we do is make sure that we've got piston A1, connecting rod A1, and piston pin A1. And first thing we do is we lube up the piston pin bores in the piston. Make sure you got a good coating of that all the way around. And then take the residual 
and do the pin. Oh, by the way, something I should mention here. This particular pin, I think, is like a small block Chevy pin, which they use uh, with, these, uh, with these pistons. And it just happens to be one thousandth of an inch bigger than the pin that goes in the stock bore, which is not really a problem because it's a fairly inexpensive thing to have done uh, to hone these out to the proper size for that pin. And really, you should be replacing this, these bushings anyway, which uh, basically it renews the bushing. Now, remember we said earlier that we've got an arrow on the piston that has to go to the front because of piston pin offset. We also noted the fact that the bevel on the connecting rod, it's really important. The A side, being that it's the A bank is a connecting rod width further back, the bevel has to go backward in the opposite direction than the arrow is. So we're going to take our piston pin. Oops, we got to lube our pin up. I'm told I use way more lube than I need to, but beats the alternative. So there we go, arrow forward, bevel backward. And there we go. Easy peasy. Well, that is in fact the easy part of the job. What we got to do now is install the retainer. Now these are not like the standard retainers that come with the stock pistons. These are called spiral locks and they're essentially a flat coil spring that is that has no spacing to it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that end and fit it into the groove that uh, is cut in the inside of the pin bore. And that's to get it started. And it works out best if I do it this way with a piston toward me. Now my technique changes from day to day depending on which finger is least painful at this point because this does actually generate a fair degree of pain. And this is not an easy process to do ordinarily, and it's hard to do it on camera so that you can see what's going on. So you get it started, and then I take a flat screwdriver like this one and work my way around. There you go. Now that was easy, right? Well, guess what? They're doubled. You got to put another one in. So the end of the first one is right there. So I'm going to start a little bit further up the line here. And the second one is actually a little bit harder than the first one. Now when you get toward the end, you may have to pick up the end of the spiral lock and twist it a little bit and angle it a little bit in order to get it to fit in. There you go. And then just make sure that it's seated all the way around, which it is. And repeat 23 times.
So there we are, all staged up to put the Pistons in the short block on episode 7 here on the Camp Chaos Chronicles. So if you like these videos, like, subscribe, and maybe leave some comments down below so that we can know what we can do to do what we do better. And we'll see you the next time on the Camp Chaos Chronicles.